All right, guys, this lesson plan is going to be uh, this drawings, those introductions to our drawings, what is going to be parts of a wall frame system. We're going to get deep and dirty real quick. Uh, so I'm giving you guys some insight on what it takes to get to the drawings, uh, to do structural studs. I'm going to, it's going to be parts of parts of videos of, of all uh, sections of the drawing itself. So this is going to be what we're going to be working on for the next couple of weeks. And these are the sections we're going to get covering uh, throughout the week, uh, we're gonna break this down into sections. I know you're looking at this thing like, wow, Mr. Mm -hmm. Orange, this is a lot. Yeah, it seems that way, but as you see, every one of them has a section, and each section, I'm gonna break it down to how we got to where we need to be to do one big drawing of just this by itself. Uh, we're gonna get into scale, we're gonna do half inch equals one inch, uh, scale laid out. So, again, so this is the actual, this is a nominal, and then what you're gonna do in real life is gonna be the actual. All right. So let's get some of these terminologies down and we can get right into it. I'll be going back and forth between uh, the drawings to connect your knowledge to the actual um, terms, right? All right. So the first one we're going to talk about is sole plate, which is the lowest horizontal portion of a wall framing. So that's basically the part you're looking at right here. This is the bottom of a sole plate. It runs all the way across the bottom. As you see, this is cut out because you cannot walk through a door and you have a two by four that you trip on it every time. So this is a sole plate which connects the vertical member to the um, top plate. And it's also shot down to the subfloor. Second one we're gonna get into is top plate. Top plate is the highest horizontal strip of a wall framing. Usually are doubled at the top of the wall and the frame. So kind of give me an example of what I'm talking about here. It's like having the sole plate, then you have the top plate, which goes under, and then you have a double top plate, which is this, this is at the bottom, and then you have two, these two by fours up top. All right, so kind of moving on with that. Now we're gonna move on to the second part of this. All right, so stud is a vertical support structure of a frame. So once again, looking at this here, these are studs. Every single thing on this diaphragm is studs. It changes through the sections you're working in. That's so why I put section on that, section one, section two, section three. It changes depending on what are you actually drawing and what are you actually making. So a stud can easily change into a top cripple, door cripple, or it can easily change into fire blocking when you have leftovers. Uh, it can easily change to corner posts. It can also change into top and bottom uh, cripples and and everything else. So we're gonna go farther into this. So just know, stud, everything's still a stud. It just depends on what applications you're applying it to. All right, second one we're gonna do is a header. A header is pretty much is a horizontal structure member that supports the load over an opening such as a window or a door. I always think like this, if you ever went to the dentist and you actually had to get a crown or you had to do, not a head a crown, uh, a bridge in your mouth, right? And there's a vacant place in your teeth, that's just like a header. So what it does is, is literally it's, it takes over that space that you use for a door or window, but actually have carry the load of that pressure that's coming down. So again, everything stacks like your head. Your head is the roof. Your shoulders, your arms, your torso, the uh, structural studs, the vertical studs. Your legs will be the foundation wall, and then your feet and your ankles will be the crown. May I'm sorry, be the, uh, be the key, and also be the uh, the footing of the building. So I always try to say, try and terminologies to connect it to things that you already know. That's how you get uh, further along with the uh, construction concepts. All right, we're moving into this. It's called king stud. Yes, I'm a king and you a stud. No, so, so what a king stud does, man, is help support the vertical structure element that's placed off layout adjacent to the frame, opening of each side, such as the door window, is the same length as the common studs in the wall and fastened in a similar manner. So, once again, like I explained, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. All what happens is, just because of its um, particular job in each section, it changed. So in this case, this is now because it's a stud, but now because it's supporting that opening of the door, it became a king stud, which supports the jack, but also supports the header. So it has a job now. So it changed and it depends on where it's actually 
uh, what it's doing at that point in time. keep this kind of short and sweet for you guys. I don't make these videos too long, but it's a lot of content that has to be covered before we actually get into the actual drawing itself. All right, so we get into sheeting. Sheeting is a board attached to the exterior studding or rafter of a structure. Usually, uh, usually it's OSB and it's oriented strand board. So this is a manufactured uh, materials made uh, for covering of materials for a wall structure or maybe for flooring or something like that. Uh, if it's on a subfloor, you most likely call it a uh, subfloor, subflooring. Uh, if it goes onto a wall, it's called OSB, they use OSB. So it's just basically sheeting. Let me show you a picture of what I'm talking about real quick. And there you go. So these are studs, and this is a sheeting. It goes over to cover the actual uh, structure itself. All right, only one thing too, when you're using OSB, you gotta be really careful because the fact that OSB is like to swell, it's like a pimple. If you get it wet, it's gonna fall right on top of your head. Uh, it's gonna foam up on your head and then literally what's gonna happen is uh, it's no good to you. So what you're gonna find yourself trying to um, cut out that bump, which all they're gonna do is you can't do anything around it. You gotta cut it out and use it for a different section of the wall or something like that. Uh, so you'll see on the job site, you'll see they said don't open up the uh, OSB until you're ready to use for sheeting so it won't swell under uh, the material. Uh, it won't swell under the because of the weather. Uh, another thing is too, uh, they put uh, sheeting. So it'd be felt paper, it might be um, uh, water backing, water water paper, some kind of tie back or something like that. So it could really, so it could, again, support the structure of the OSB so it won't get wet. And if so, they keep the moisture off of the uh, material itself. So it's like waterproofing. All right, cripple stud. All you really know about cripple stud is, cripple stud is a, a stud is used above or below a door opening, which again, helps support the load, the bearing uh, structure of the building. So let's kind of look at this one, make it a little simpler on you. These are triple studs right here. Cripple studs, cripple stud, cripple stud and so on, cripple stud, cripple stud, cripple stud. And as you use again, is to help support the load to carry everything down. Everything must stack, right? So these are laid out, same as layout as your stud. So if I say your stud becomes a cripple stud, but it's still on the same layout. So 16 on center, you might be pulling 16 on center. You may as well 16 on center. It's basically having every red tick mark on a ruler, I mean a measuring tape, indicates that it is a stud that's gonna be laid out. What we're gonna do is on these further videos is show you how to actually find the layout for each wall section you wanna cover. So 10 feet wall, nine foot wall, 20 foot wall, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna be landing out on 16 on center. Yes, this does change. It depends on municipality, the ingenuity of the building you're working on. Uh, it, it has a multiple factors of things that you need to take in consideration when you're actually using, um, uh, after, like, yeah, when you're doing layouts of studs. So you have to check with the engineering, the architecture, of the building and whatnot. Trimmer stud and jack stud. So again, trim and jack is the same. It just depends on what's, what, who you're working around with, what terms you I've been on job sites where uh, there was a debate on what, why we call it trimming, why we call it stud. I just came down to the solution that is whatever you're comfortable with, you're doing the same application as anyone else is doing, the same thing. As long as it's supporting the header, which is job is to just do that, support the, uh, su support the header. You can call it trimmer stud, you can call it jack stud. It's still the same exact thing. You know, so again, it's attached to the king stud, which is adjacent uh, off layout for the opening. Uh, one thing you gotta also understand that again, this is uh, made trimmer stud is just made for that, or jack stud is that to support the header that's supporting the load, which is the bridge of an opening, so you can walk in and I walk out, or you can have a window that you can look in and look out in. All right, now let's go into what is a rough opening. A rough opening is formed by framing members, which basically, it falls back into this. You have your <coughs> rough openings. Your rough openings is from end to end. So you might get a layout where they say, yo, pull your measurement, your window opening is gonna be uh, four feet. So from the center, 
you want to go two feet this way, two feet opening this way, and this is a rough opening. You have to be careful because you keep a rough opening, they give you that rough opening because when you come in here and start framing in, it's actually going to shrink up. So I always say you guys use a quarter of an inch and a half an inch more on both sides. So if you do a quarter this way, a quarter this way, it gives you a half inch play. A quarter inch all together is a half inch all together, but it gives you a quarter inch play so you can get your drywall or you can get your um, trim pieces in there. Anything of the sort, they're going to help you. You don't want it too tight. You just want to say rough opening. They give you a rough opening number because a trim guy, trim woman will come in and they're going to do all, the, all that stuff. So I'll give you an example of what I'm saying. It'll be right here. So this is the header. This is the rough opening. You want to leave that room open so you can get that trim in there. Right? Get your piece, get your slim, uh, shims in there. You might have to shim the windows uh, right or left or whatever to see the reveal. Make sure you got the right reveal. And that'll give you some room to play. Because if you make it too tight, you can't do none of this. And then it's, it's no good to you. You have to start cutting out. Um, wood and everything else so they give you a rough number so you can accommodate the trim guy trim woman of any sort now the bottom member of a rough opening is a rough seal so you're looking at this right here let's just look at this a good example is this right here so let's look right into this so this is the rough seal which is actually the same width of your opening rough opening right but one thing you have to take in consideration as well, most people don't understand, is that you must put another triple, a uh, cripple right here on both edge. Ask yourself why. Well, that helps support the actual seal itself, what the window sits on. And think about this when the drywaller come in, they put the drywall in, and if it breaks right here and it has no backing in there, what happens? They have nothing to nail to. You can actually, when you need to, sometimes you're hanging out the window and you just need a nail right there, nail it right there to help support that, that um, the flap that comes over the window and there's nothing there, you're gonna punch a hole right into the siding, right? So by having an extra two by, uh, extra uh, cripple in there, helps support the load of the window, helps support the uh, window itself when you have to nail it off and that it reveals just right, but you have nothing right there. So when you put a nail through it, it sticks to nothing. You have nearly absolutely nothing to nail into. But on multiple jobs where you're really trying to drive a nail in there and you can't do anything about it now or screw because it's not gonna hold because there's nothing there to help support it. So this gives the window a support, also help with um, sealing up the window better. You can wrap it around and it just literally what it does is it helps seal, uh, support the rough opening of the um, seal and support the load of the window as well. And it gives backing for the drywallers to come in. If they need to break on this, they can break on this and it's all running 16 on center. All right, while we on that subject, let's talk about a little something called layout. All right, let me get it closer for nail in. All right, so if you see these X marks going this way, X, X going this way. That is an indication of which way the layout came from, right? That's all that X is indicating to is this, which way the layout came from. So you might be right-handed, left-handed, but you might lay the whole building out from right to left. So you'll take this and your layout's gonna start, we're gonna just use two inches. And I'm gonna go two inches this way. All right, I'm working my two top plate, bottom plate. Then I'm gonna go four inches. Then I'm gonna go six and so on and so on. So with that done, what I'm gonna do is, I have to tell you which way I travel. That X gives you an indication, like telling the story, which way, it's taking my speed square by the way, that you travel, that's all it's doing. That X mark is telling you where it starts, which way you came from. So I came from right to left. So, and I mark my X this way. It's telling the person behind them, yo, your layout will come from right to left and then it will break on center, right? So that's like 16 on center. It goes back to this. In this case, I'll do this. It's gonna break 16 on center. It's gonna break 32 on center. 48 right drywall is uh 48 it's up uh, four feet by eight feet so when i'm laying the drywall out i know it's gonna break at 48 if i lay it 16 on center so to give you an example of what you can do as well um the cheat sheet is saying this you can literally um let me just show you like this you can take you should burn three quarter of an inch when you're doing layout so when i say three quarter of an inch lay, burn it's basically so your drywall can always lay directly on 16, right? So if I go 15 and a quarter, 
Then I go 31 and a quarter, and I saw I'm going 47 and a quarter. I can make it back up and put my two by four right there on the 40 inch and a quarter mark. Why? Because, let's see if I can do this. This is literally the center of this thing here. This is an inch and a half. So I make it back up, right? So if I go put my put my put my two by four on the edge of that 16 on center, I mean 15 and a quarter, I can make it back up because this is three quarter of an inch of it already. And it's always gonna break dead center. This is called finger scribing, by the way. So I'll just take my finger, this is a little technique I'm showing you guys. It's called finger scribing. This is guiding my finger. I know this is a dead center of this. And then I measure this. And I'll have the two is my new zero. I should be three quarter of an inch in the center, which this thing is only an inch and a half thick. So let me slow that down for you because I know it kind of went over some people's head. So you know that it's 16 on center. Now if I go 15 and a quarter back, my stud is an inch and a half, right? So instead of putting this 16 on center, then X this way, and then I know every time I do that way, I actually cheated back a 15 and a quarter, so my 16 on center will break on center. So every time I lay out my drywall, I know I'll break directly, finger scrapping again, and center of my two by four. You don't have to do that, but that's what some people do that, and they kind of confuse. When you go up to a wall and you want to measure, you're like, wait, why is this 15 and a quarter? Well, they did it because it breaks, the plywood will break directly in center of the actual member, two by four member, or two by six, or whatever it may be, as long as it's an inch and a half. All right, so that's one thing there. That's another secret for you, and I'm gonna give you one more secret before we get out this video, make it really short. Uh, this is again, this is all for the anyone. Uh, when you've been in trades, want how to draw, all sorts, right? Another technique I want to share with you guys that's not being told out there when you apprentice, and that's why you get yourself laid off or that you want to get rid of you really quickly, is because they don't tell you, like, they say, oh, stop standing around. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what you've been doing in high school, so now you got to change. They're not going to tell you more than twice on the job site, so you got to stay ahead of the game. So if you work on a job site, understand this. If you already laid out the floor joists, which is 16 on center, since we talked about that, let me show you a uh, quick understanding what I'm saying, which is here. This is laid 16 on center. Your layout came from this way, from left to right this time, right? They took the first measurement, well, on this particular one, they didn't show that. But anyway, 16 on center laid out this way, right? This is the foundation wall, this is your sail plate, and this is 16 on center. Well, this one came this way, and this one goes that way. So just tell you what indication which way they, they traveled when they lay out their marks. You can see that right mark, left mark. That's just telling you which way they came when they lay out. All right. So you laid it out already, right? Now you put the plywood down. You shot the plywood down. Plywood is shot down. Let's just use this as a scenario. Right here. Just focus on this. Zoom in right quick. They shot the plywood down. All right, let's just go in here like this. Oh, come up. All right, shot the plywood down. All right. So now, this is say these studs are your joists, right? So all the joists is laid out. So every tick, every nail you see is a joist. You see how this is broken center now? They laid out like 15 on center, 15 and a quarter, and they just how your plywood is breaking on the center of this joist all the way through so given that why are you waiting around waiting for the foreman to tell you what to do next you don't have to wait on the foreman at all why because it's already pre-laid out for you already all you have to do is go over look at each line that's shot up that's your joist right 16 on center and start dropping studs right over top of those bad boys they would not yell at they might say say who are you doing what are you doing but they're already telling them that you're already thinking ahead of the game so while he or she has the plates laying down, you got the plates already laid out, right? Ready for them to lay it out. 
But while you do that, and they, work, they still land another wall for you, you can start laying out your joists, your studs, your two by four studs. Don't worry about putting the headers in, don't worry about putting the jacks in, the cripples. Just worry about putting those studs in, 16 on center, because everything's laid out on 16 on center, because it's already gonna stack on each other, like your head, your shoulders, everything else. So when you raise that wall up, which I'm gonna show you right now, it accommodate the pace. So while you laying a well out already, let me zoom out. These studs is gonna lay on top of, you can see the layout right now. That's the layout right there. It came from right to left for the openings, right? And then when it's all said and done, when you're done with the top plate, you see these nails going there, it's to give you an indication. Do the same thing on the second floor. Cause the joist's gonna sit right on top of your studs cause everything stacks, right? So you already gonna be ready for them already. So the plywood is down already. You got nails shooting up through the wall, going through there. Now just start laying out the two by fours right on top of them. And then they're gonna come over and they're gonna lay out the they're gonna lay out the um, top plate, bottom plate. But you that's another step you don't have to worry about doing because they are you already did it already. So they gotta come in and just do that. You come back with the uh, framing gun, shoot that up, ba da da bow. So by you by the time you're done with this and you gotta do all the layout cuts. They are on the other side doing an east elevation or west elevation, or south elevation, whatever it is, but you always in cahoots or uh, uh, in sequence with everyone on a job site. And so when it's time to lay off, lay off come, because you know they're always gonna come around, they're gonna think about having you on a job longer because it's nip, because you are already thinking ahead of the game. Just by simply seeing the floor plan before you actually see the blueprints. You already learning how to do blueprints before the blueprints even come in your hand by knowing these small techniques. And that's the sep this is how I'm separating you guys and girls and who else is going to be in the trade from anyone else, right? So these techniques is not going to really apply too much when we start drawing, but it is going to apply because it's giving me, just give you more insight and depth on what it takes to get to this point of uh, measurements. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to share with you at this point. I'm not going to bore you too much more. I just want to give you guys, again, some insight on what it takes to get to that level of excellency. And it's really just come to the simple concepts of just knowing what you can and cannot do on a job site. Uh, employability skills to get you to that next level. So, if you like the video, man, do subscribe. It's gonna come uh, several simultaneously throughout. Uh, so, you know how I do it. Chew! All right, guys, see you next video.